Denzel, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Looking at some of the stuff you've been doing in training, um, all sorts of stuff as well as the usual bags, pads. You're also doing uh, runs, crazy golf, I believe. What's that yeah. all about? <laughs> <laughs> crazy golf, um, you know, Martin likes to mix it up and have a bit of fun to make it interesting because the work's always going to be hard no matter what we do. So we're playing a bit of crazy golf, um, done a bit uh, basketball and football, so you're shooting from the penalty spot or from the free throw line. And whoever misses has to do the forfeit, and whoever scores doesn't have to do the forfeit, has to, has to call out the forfeit. Yeah, well, it was quite fun, but I, I got put on two of the forfeits. What do you want to do, Dens? 20 press-ups. 20 press-ups. Coming in, Tom, where you go, hit them. Call them, call them, call them, come and... In terms of fight, Mark Heffron next, would you say that's the biggest fight of your career so far, your professional yeah, career? Yeah, so far, so far, yeah, biggest fight of my career, especially with the fact that it's a title fight. Never fought for a title before as a professional, so it's the biggest fight of my career so far, yeah. Um, he's got 19 KOs, you've got 11 from 13. I've got a feeling this might not go the distance. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll have to see on the night. Um, if he walks onto something, it might end early, but if not, then, then, then we're going the distance. So you're sort of planning for all eventualities, really? Yeah, 100%, 100% you have to, because I can't just go in there and think I'm going to knock him out. I've, I've, I've never hit him before, so I don't know how he's going to take one of my shots. But I do know I hit quite hard and I do know I will hurt him in there. He probably thinks the same thing, but at the end of the day, it's a fight and anything can happen. So I've got to be prepared for everything, every, every outcome. When did you first start getting interested in boxing? Uh, when I was about 15. When I was about 15, my brother bought gloves from Sunday Market, down Nine Elms. And we just used to fight in the block. His whole, his, his whole idea of it was, I'm going to charge everyone to kind of lace up the gloves and fight. At this point, we knew nothing about boxing. We didn't used to watch it nothing. We just knew boxing was a sport kind of thing. So then, um, what happened? People didn't really pay. It was, it was at a, a point where people wasn't really paying. And then, so we just started calling people out and fighting for free. So it's like, you get, you get uh, two people might line up and be like, all right, he's smaller, because my brother was a bit shorter than me. He's smaller, he fought my brother, and I fought the bigger one. So then they'll go first and then they'll fight and then I'll jump in next, we'll swap around the gloves and that, then I'll go next and we would just beat everyone involved, we were kind of beating up. So and we used to record it, but I, I don't have none of the footage, it's actually, it's actually annoying, but I wish I did. But it was good fun, we had no technique, nothing, everything was slaps. Didn't even do rounds, but just going to whoever quits, quits, but it was fun. Before you started doing that, had, were you watching boxing? Was there any boxes no, in particular? No, no, I wasn't watching any boxing. That's when we started watching boxing after that. And then because I started watching boxing late, of course I've had the uncles that watched boxing, so I think the first fight I watched live might have been, well, live on telly, might have been Hey Klitschko, but I wasn't interested in it. So the, the first fight I watched as, as a boxing fan was, I think, Adrian Broner versus Man and Arjun. And I was thinking, ah, oh, this, is, this is kind of nice. I like the all access to it, back and forth. And I was like, yeah, this is what we want to do. But then you find out very quickly, it's, it's nothing like that and it's a lot harder. So I stuck with it and he, he kind of stopped and carried on. His, 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 his venture, which he's doing management and music and stuff, so, which is good for him. I, I stuck to it and he supports me 100%. Yeah, when I got to college, this is a bit late, I, I couldn't find a gym because you know they're all under these arches and I used to call up and they're saying they're full. Like a, lot of, a lot of the amateur gyms I called that were closer to me, they didn't really want to take anyone on that was inexperienced. I don't think they had the time to bring up new boxes. So they asked me, have you boxed before? I say no, then they say, sorry, we're full. So I got kind of shut down a lot. Then when I went to college, about 17 now, um, I met a friend that boxed. Eventually we went up to Fisher ABC. That was the first amateur gym I boxed for. And that's the only amateur gym I boxed for and I went up from there. And you went to university for a bit, didn't you? What happened yeah, there? yeah, yeah. I went, I went to university for a bit. Uh, I, I just wasn't really interested in it. It's, it's, it's hard for me to do things I'm not really interested in. Like, that's the type of person I am. But I thought to myself, you know what, stick it out, you're here already and, and finish it. But then I went to one of the lecturers one day and I asked them, what are the job options with, with the course I'm doing? And then they let me know what the, what, the, what the job options were after I've graduated. And I thought, I don't want to do any of that. There's no way. And then I, I, I fought on it for a bit. I turned around to my friend and I said, I think I'm going to leave and pull it all into boxing. If, if, I, if I leave this and I'm not putting it all into boxing, then I'm, I'm, I'm a time waster. I've wasted my time. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And then I've done that. I was about 19 when I dropped out. And here we are today. Great. And, and turn pro at what age? How, how? 22. I was 22 when you yeah. and uh, I believe your first three fights uh, lasted a, a, a combined total of three minutes. So you weren't, you weren't hanging around, were you? Yeah, no, the thing is, it's funny because as an amateur, I didn't really knock anyone out. I knocked out one person that had two stoppages. So I didn't expect to knock anyone out. So in my first fight, I, was, I just kind of rushed my opponent, landed and he was gone. I was thinking, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and then the second fight, I was taking it easy. Then he tried to stick it on me and I 
threw a big right hand, clocked him, he's gone. I'm thinking, where's this coming from? I had, I had literally had no clue that I could hit that hard. And then in the third fight, I, I, was, I was a bit more comfortable with, okay, I know I can hit now. And I fought a guy that beat me in the amateurs, so I was really up for it. I, I really wanted to hurt him. So in, in that fight, I kind of stuck it on him and I got him out of there in the first round as well. We're in the new Peacock now. You've been, been with the Peacock, you know, a long time now. Um, good gym to stick to. Yeah. yeah, good gym. It's a, it's a lovely gym. I've been at the, at the old gym like five years. I was there for like a good year and a half before I actually turned professional. So it, it was it was good there. It was becoming home. Well, it was home after a while, and I was getting used to everything. And then we moved here. At first, I thought oh, it was going to be a bit a bit far out, might be a bit different. But I've been in here all week, and I love it, man. I can love it in there. It's, it's a good gym. You still got a big team, so everyone's still comfortable with each other and and we get along anyway, so it's good. Daniel was first to say he's probably the biggest fish in the peacock pond. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you, how, how do you find that? Are you all right with that, him getting all the attention? Yeah, of course I'm all right with that, man. He's part of the team, so it's, it's all good. It, he kicks down the door and all of us follow him behind him. So Daniel lead the way, we all support him. We're all happy for him in his career. We're all happy with the titles he gets. We're at almost every show that we can get to anyway. The ones outside London, I haven't been to, but any of the shows in London, we're all there supporting him. Um, he wishes us luck when we're fighting, does his best to support us too. And we're a team at the end of the day. Whether he's leading the pack or not, doesn't matter. We're still going to be behind him. The fact that he's leading the pack makes it better because heavyweight boxing is booming right now. All the attention's on him. When he comes down the gym and the camera's around him, you see us in the background, so it's good. <laughs> I was going to say, it's quite nice to just go under the radar a little it bit, is, isn't it? It, you is, know? it is, it is, it is, it is. But sometimes you do want to be appreciated for what you do. No, of course. And yeah. I mean, good performance. Um, Saturday week, and uh, you know they, may, they won't be just talking about Daniel because yeah, I mean yeah, Mark exactly. Heffron is he, he, he was certainly very re highly regarded before he went in with Liam Williams, who yeah. then sort of smashed him up a bit. But yeah. then Liam Williams does that to most people, yeah, doesn't exactly, he? Exactly, exactly. Liam Williams is a good fighter, and there's no shame in losing to him. Uh, Mark Heffron's also a good fighter. He 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 took a step, tried to try to be tried to try to do what he wanted to do, and obviously he fell short. But now this is my chance to kind of step in there and do what I want to do and become the leader of the the, the pack in the weight division. And how do you see yourself going into the fight? Do you, do you, do you see yourself as the favourite? Do you, do, you do you think people will see you as the underdog or is well, it like a 50-50? In my eyes, I'm the favourite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to everybody else, based on what they've seen, I'm not expecting them to, to make me the favourite. If they do, well done on them, they've been doing their research. But if, if they don't, it's, there's no hard feelings because you haven't, they haven't seen much of me. I've had two fights on telly and one of them was because I was afloat. So I've had really one fight on telly where the promotion's been around my fight. And other facts on YouTube, you don't really see much from it. Where Mark Heffron's been in the game 10 years. He's, 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 had, he's had that fight with Liam Williams at the big stage. He's been on telly more times and he was being pushed at one point. So the promotion around him at one point was very heavy. So people are obviously going to expect him to do well just because of what they've seen on telly. But behind closed doors, I've been working, I've been doing my thing and this is my time to step up my show and shine. Well, yeah, I mean, Kelsey Bull was supposed to give you problems at Albert Hall and yeah, exactly. that didn't really happen, did exactly, it? Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> he came out saying he was going to burst my bubble and stuff and my bubble's still floating. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as for you, finally, I mean, you're only 25, you've got your career ahead of you. I guess your ultimate goal is the same for all professionals in boxing. Yeah, 100%, world champion. World champion, uh, nothing less. Uh, even if there's rocky roads and there's ups and downs, I'm still going to try and achieve that goal that I want to achieve, which I believe I can. I just need to stay focused and keep concentrated and carry on the path I'm going. But at the end of the day, I want to, the short-term goal is to win the British, spend it next year, fighting at British domestic level, hopefully win it outright, depending on how things go, you know, things in boxing, nothing's really in your control. So if, if, that's, if, if that works out nicely, I, I reckon I'll pick up a lot of experience, so then the year after, start moving on to fringe world level before moving on to world level and fighting for world titles. 